think it was when I was at the University of Waterloo last September, walking amongst a thousand other high school and university students, that I first realized the power our generation holds. You see, it was in between the rows of laptops, scattered amongst the cables and the Red Bull, that a distinct feeling lingered. As I worked for 36 hours, as is common during these engin engineering events, this feeling followed me. It followed my uh, teammates who had traveled from across the United States to join me in this Ontario town. And as we typed, as we hammered, and as we put off sleep, for just one more hour to get the job done, it radiated from us. This was the feeling of passion. The kind of passion that comes from being young and foolish, yet armed with the ability to radically affect change. For our generation, this ability is guaranteed by the technology that sits in each of our pockets. It is this technology that is exponentially growing. But as it grows, we often find it difficult to, difficult to use it as a force of good. Us teens are often left on our own to attempt to harness the power of these digital devices. And what I've found is that the power that they hold is incredible. At the University of Waterloo, I worked with fellow students to build technology that empowered the world. It was awesome. It also confirmed my suspicion that the best way to teach technolo responsible technology use is to simply let kids build with it. It was at this time, amongst all these other high school students, that I realized that technology can be a catalyst for change. And even though communication systems are changing, and they are changing radically, and even though our generation takes have instantaneous conversations and takes human connection as a commodity, there is hope. You see, we're using this technology while being blind to how it works, and that prevents us from using it as a catalyst for change and a force of, a force of good. But events like the ones that are occurring in Waterloo are at the intersection of passion and technology. And just in case we're all kind of confused about if the world is changing and communication is different, just last week, Chevy put out a press release in emojis. <laughs> <laughs> this presents a problem for those of us who need to adapt to this changing world which is why events like the one that occurred in Waterloo that sit at this inter intersection of technology and passion are so important. As late millennials and early generation Zs, we have the opportunity to change the world that previous generations could only dream of. But in order to do so, we need to harness this power. And today I'd like to outline three steps that everyone in this room can do to harness the incredible power that's surrounds us. Step number one, it's quite simple. It's all about recognizing the resources that are available to us every day. The internet is a vast place, so vast that sometimes we can't even comprehend the amount of information that is available to our fingertips. In fact, recently there was a project that attempted to print out the entirety of Wikipedia. What they found was it would take a thousand books, each with over a thousand pages, just to do this. And that doesn't include every single page that's online. This ability is incredible. This knowledge base is incredible. Sites like Coursera and iTunes U provide university level courses on hundreds of subjects for free. These bastions of knowledge need to be utilized and need to be maintained. And whether it be contributing to these sites or joining the conversations occurring on Twitter and Facebook, our generation can have our own thoughts and opinions heard online. Becoming a good, 
a good digital citizen in this ever-changing world is becoming more and more important as the world moves online. Using the web for more than just EPX and Snapchat is imperative as we move forward. Step number two, learn to code. Back in grade nine, I became interested in the source code that surrounded popular websites like Google and MSN. I was intrigued by the seemingly random words that made up these websites that I used every day. Digging a little deeper, I found YouTube tutorials on how to make websites and how to make apps. And what I found is it gave me a fundamental knowledge in how this technology works, and I was able to apply myself better to it. Take Facebook, for example. Ever wondered how your photos and your messages are stored on Facebook? You can build your own mini social network and figure out how the data is being processed. It may seem like a daunting task, but in reality, the core system of Facebook was built by a college student in 2003. And learning how to code in 2015 is a lot easier than it was back then. Events like Code Camp, which bring together hundreds of kids across the Lower Mainland and teach them how to program in Ruby and how to design websites are popping up not just here but across the world. But you don't need to wait for these physical events. Sites like Coursera, again, and Code Academy and Treehouse provide online resources to you at any time and can wet your feet in computer science. Learning how to code is a fundamental skill in the 21st century, whether your job requires it or not. Step number three, now that you've found something that has best resources, and now that you know how to code, you can apply these skills. You can take some of the issues you see in the world, whether it be climate change, education, healthcare, government, and use technology to set a stage for you to apply your big ideas. This, these ideas can be as simple as an app. In grade 10, I noticed my classmates were having a hard time figuring out their class timetables and having a hard time having conversation and dialogue with their teachers. Exploring the issue, I found that maintaining a directory of contact information for staff and figuring out the day's class rotation were tasks better delegated towards my smartphone. So I built an app with those features in mind. And while the idea was simple and its implementation was even simpler, the result was fewer late students and better communication between pupils and teachers. On the other side of the spectrum, your idea can be so complex that you yourself don't know if you can finish it. Back when I was in Waterloo with my international team, we built Project Seed. The idea was to provide areas with no internet connection, whether it be because they're in a remote place or because there was just a disaster, the opportunity to use the online resources that we take for granted. After the weekend, we had a fully functional local server that provided these resources. Things like Wikipedia, MIT Courseware, Free the Children Agricultural Guides, all within this one little box. Going from an idea to a working piece of hardware is just in 36 hours, is just one of the ways technology can be used as a platform and a catalyst for change. So now you have these three steps. You're able to apply some of the best technology to empower you and to empower others. Don't just let it bring down your self-esteem or make your daily routine more distracting. This technology is running most of the world already, and it's up to our generation to apply it to more things. Our generation is facing some of the greatest challenges and, and questions of mankind. How do we deal with technology that is doubling in intelligence every two years? How do we pursue our passion when our tools are constantly changing? The answer is to ultimately remind ourselves that we're in control of what gets designed, what gets built, what gets coded. And it's our generation's job to pull the reins of innovation towards the social good. Thank you.